going down this crappy ass hill, steep ass hill. It never looks steep when you're on the video, but this is a, talking to the video. I'm like, I'm barefoot or gorilla foot going down this steep shady ass hill. It almost looks like there was a staircase here, but it's not, I think those are just roots. Might have been a staircase at some point, many, many years ago. I've been down this. So where I'm going is to clean my fish. People always want to see the cats cook, clean, and eat experience. So that's what I do. It's I, The irony is I've done this video here before, right in this very spot. It's a good place to clean fish. I've camped in that very same spot up there. That's my camp is on top of that hill. Can't really see it, but Maria's up there. There's a big steep hill. And I can go right down here to the water, stand in the water and clean these fish. So I'll put the thing on a tripod and anyone who is interested can watch me clean my fish. It's not that exciting and interesting, but nevertheless, some people enjoy that type of thing. So I, I this is not the exact spot I, I talked about before. I like to have a log. I guess I'll cut them right on there. So let's get over here and I'll set it up. Well, I just recorded an entire video of me cleaning these fish and then realized I didn't record a video cleaning the fish. However, I'll spare you the, the BS and just say, they slipped out of this bag right now. So I was gonna throw them on this plate and then you can see some of these beautiful trout that I caught and cleaned, just clean them. They're gonna be delicious eating tonight. There's a lot of meat in these fish. And these are perfect eating sized fish. Um, they range in size from probably nine to 11 inches. I did say, I did talk about how they have different colored meats. Like this one has really pink meat. Um, some of the ones have more whiter meat. And I was told by an old youper that those are the native fish are the ones that are really pink, meaning they have wild. They've been here for thousands and millions of years. And then the other fish are the ones that have been um, planted, uh, the line of planted fish. So they planted fish, I don't know how many, 50 years ago, but I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can see that. And I was also talking about my awesome letterman knife. So there you go, you can get no kind of light, but there's a, a plate full of beautiful, fat, big, fat, beautiful brook trout that we're gonna eat tonight. I just, I just cooked them, I just caught them. And uh, in this river, just clean them right there. You can see the heads and the guts are all sitting right there in the bottom. Give them to the crayfish and stuff. And then um, put them in the cooler for now. And I got to do a show with Larry Mazza. And then, um, booyah, we're going to eat good. Maria loves these. These are, I mean, she loves these trout. Just eats them up. She'll eat like three of them things. Unreal. She eat more than me. She just enjoys them, you know. So I, I, these are all fish that swallowed the hook that were going to die anyway. So... Yeah, I would have felt bad if I caught a real big one and it swallowed the hook. I wanted to let it go, or a real little one. But these are all perfect eating, perfect sized fish for eating. Perfect, you know, between nine, I think one is probably pushing 12. A couple of them are 10 and a half, 11. A couple of them are, one of them was eight, nine, whatever. So they're good fish. Bang. Cleaned. And by the way, I was saying I use this Letterman tool that I inherited from, well, it's Maria's ex, ex husband's. Um, and she ended up with it. So, I don't know if you know what this is. It's called Leatherman tool. It's or Leatherman, excuse me. It's a really good, well-made tool. And you open it up, and it's got the pliers and like eight different tools on it. But it's super well-made, and it won't break. And it's got every tool you can need, including multiple blades. Uh, I like this. I like this kind of serrated blade. It's super sharp and cuts right. It's stainless steel, and it cuts right through. You don't want to get it dull because stainless steel is hard to sharpen. But when it is sharp, it's freaking awesome. So, if you can invest in one, these are 175 bucks. I looked it up yesterday. 175 bucks for this tool. It's crazy. I'm grateful I had it. I was in the car. I forgot to bring a good knife. I got a knife collection. I got one little pocket knife, and it's not that sharp. I'm like, damn, I had a knife. I said, don't we have another knife? And she's like, yeah, we got this. This to keep this in the car. This Leatherman. And I was like, oh man, I need that. Give me that. That's perfect. And I pulled it out. And I've been using it the whole time. So now I got to wash my feet. So I'm standing in this. But the problem with this is, I ripped the hole in my waiter. So now. I'm gonna be wading barefoot in the river anyways. So I kind of just gotta get used to being cold-footed in the river. 
Oh, that water is cold, man. I don't know how if I'm gonna be able to do it. I'm gonna try. It's freaking ice water, dude. Not fun. I come back from cook, uh, cleaning my fish, and look what my wife has waiting for me. Good wife. Oh, that guy just came back from fishing. I was gonna run over there and be like, you guys are. Hey, hey, what's the secret? He doesn't seem very social. He's not social. He just came to fish, but you know, I'm social. I, uh, anyways, look at this beautiful lunch brunch my wife made me. I got a show with Larry in a few minutes. Uh, so I need to eat something. And that's the something. So here's our, our, our picnic table. It's kind of a mess, but we're camping. So fire's still smoldering. I got a whole trout limit of trout we're having for dinner. We're going to eat good. Just saying. <laughs> so I'm heading into town. Oh, you want him with a band aid? I smacked my freaking forehead on the, yeah, the back of the truck open here and the lid, whatever, trunk. And I walked right into it. Bang! And gashed my head. So. My wife was taking a nap. She had a, a rough night last night. She, sometimes when she eats corner stomach, acts funky. And like, I woke up in the middle of the night to her like st stepping on me, but the light was on. She turned her headlamp on, and she like steps on me because we're in this bed in the tent. And I, I don't know. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm gonna poop my pants. <laughs> so it said my reaction was. Hold on, don't don't do it yet. Let me get my video. Let me get my let me get my phone. I need to record this. <laughs> That's what I said to her, man. Can't believe it. right out of a dead sleep. I gotta put I'm gonna put my pants on. Like, Hold on! Let me get this recorded on video. She's like, I can't believe that's your first instinct. And then so anyway, she ended up having to run back and forth to the bathroom about like, I don't know, ten times. And she never got any sleep. She sat with the bed. She was cold at first. I don't know how. I was perfectly comfortable. I was doing great. I slept like a rock. And then she said, and then all of a sudden her stomach started acting up. And then it was like four in the morning. She hadn't been to sleep yet. And then she, that happened. She went back and forth like seven, eight. She said six, seven times, but she just stayed out there. And uh, she ended up just getting a bunch of firewood and, and, and starting a fire and sitting around the fire. And, so she's exhausted. She's tired. She's she worked all day too. So then at nine o'clock she had to log in her, her even though we're camping, she's still working. So she logged in and she had a really good day at work, very productive. She had some great leads. And so and I was fishing all day and um caught us some dinner. But then of course I ripped the hole in my waders like a dumbass. And the irony of that is I was showing I showed a video, it should have been shown by now on this like thread. of me climbing over this like pine tree. Wasn't even that big of a freaking deal. It was just kind of, but it was like almost chest high. So I had to step over it with all my weight on my tippy toes. And I just, one little branch hooked into my waders and ripped a freaking hole in my waders. The thing is, I've done that same exact scenario a thousand times and never ruined my waders. And the irony is I just made the video showing me going over it the thing uh, I should pipe it in right here and then and then in that same and then I shut the video off because like I, I gotta need both my hands went freaking ripped a hole in my way so while I'm going to town and I'm hoping that there's a little store it's about seven eight miles down this road um it's just it I'm back in here in the middle of nowhere this road we're about eight seven eight miles from the highway where the highway is a little tiny town. I'm not going to say the name of it, but um, it's kind of famous for it. Um, famous for its uh, trout. And anyways, I um, I'm going to see if I can find a patch kit, man. I'm really hoping that, like, since they do get a lot of trout fishermen, there's so many trout fishermen in the area, and because of the river and stuff, I'm hoping that maybe if I get lucky, they'll have a patch kit. Like somebody will have a patch kit in the stores, two stores two little gas station stores so i'm hoping that maybe we shall see if not i'll spend i'll be spending the next freaking three days waiting in my shorts and, and my king sandals and that sucks because you step in this muck right when you step in this muck this silty muck along the shore and it's like suction it's like quicksand so when you go to pull your foot out 
your shoe will stay. With the wading boots, they're like, ah, it's super tight. And they're like, you know, double tied to your foot so you can kind of suck it out of that muck. But um, but the sandals, I've never done it. I've never waded, free waded with just shorts and sandals. Um, I don't know how that's gonna go. But it's not gonna stop me from fishing, I tell you that. I will fish. Um, it's gonna be cold, the water's ice cold. But I do know from experience, you can get used to it. Even today, when I ripped the hole in my waders, I kept fishing for like an hour, and they, my waders were filled with water, ice cold water. But it's really uncomfortable because you, you got you know 20 pounds of water in each of your legs, and it, and it can cause you to make a mistake. You can go step over a limb or a tree or a log or a rock, and you just trip and you fumble, and then you're going down face first, and you're worried about getting your bone wet and hurting yourself bad. So it's better to not even have them janky ass waders on if i can't patch them then you know I, I might if i had some gorilla tape my gorilla tape might do it gorilla tape might do it and no i don't know why we don't we usually have gorilla tape everywhere we go and with us and there might be some back here in, in, in the electronics bag back there back in there but um gorilla tape one piece on the inside one piece on the outside would do it it would still leak a little bit but it would it would it would do the trick so let's hope that it does because I'm not really keen on wading in the freaking water in my sandals freezing cold water for five hours at a time and I got some fishing to do man I'm at my one of my best spot I haven't even hit it yet and um it's a little late had I hit it a month ago I'm sure I would have caught some giants but you know since then I'm sure people have hit it at the end of the day it's still my best spot i've caught about out, out of the out of the 20 trophy class fish i've caught in my life i've caught like 15 of them in that river so that's where i'm going it's about 10 miles from our camp down this road then another road then another road but uh, maria found it for me five years ago and um and that first year in five years i caught nine trophy class fish nine and um, we're talking about fish the size that you would catch once in a lifetime. I caught nine of them in that river. Um, but then I came, they built, a, they built a bridge over it that year though. So that, that meant more people were aware of it and could get to that. And the next year there was, I haven't, I haven't caught a big fish in there since. Although this year I did went there a couple weeks ago and fished just by the bridge and caught a couple eight, 10 inches. So that, that's a good sign. It means if I get four, four or 500 yards from the bridge way downstream, it's very possible nobody's been down there or a few have been down there and you know i'd give me a giant so anyways i'm finally in town here now so i'm going to buy some firewood on the way back i should ask that guy if he's got any uh waiter fixer couldn't hurt to, i mean i just ask a random stranger i'm like do you have any patch kits what's it hurt to ask people are nice up here that's why i love it up here like, sure man i hook you up right here boom bam we shall see so I made a video going to the store, heading to the store to to find a. Uh, Look at your face. What's wrong with my face? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh thing. my face. That's a reference to a funny video we made when I first got out of prison. I just came out of surgery, I had oral surgery, and I was on <laughs> stone on propofol, and I couldn't even talk. Don't remember nothing. I was like, uh, and I said, my face. She's like, what? I said, what's wrong with my face? <laughs> then he'd say that. And I looked over at you, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of drooled, and she goes, oh. <laughs> that makes sense. I love oh, that face. I love that oh, face. That's funny. That's funny. It is. Anyways, so I set off on a mission to go find um, a kit to patch my, my waders. I got a hole in my waders. A nice square hole that I ripped like a dumbass in my waders. So, first place, nothing. The other place, closed. So I go back to the first place to buy some duct tape, thinking worst case scenario, I could just duct tape it and maybe that's a long shot, but probably not. Also, I said, I'm gonna knock on this guy's door. This guy sells firewood and produce. He has, he has these huge gardens. He had a coyotes? Mm -hmm. And uh, I knock on the freaking door. Nobody answers the door. The back door's wide open. There are people there and freaking, I'm like, I'm like, oh no, that's our friends are yeah, back. I, I thought it was a coyote. That's our friends are, the neighbors and that. Anyways, so nothing, so. Some lady gave me a roll of like superpower tape, which I think is gonna work. But then somebody told me to go to this other little town that was seven miles away. So it's a 14 mile round trip from where we're at. 
and they have like, like a little grocery store type of place that probably has a patch kit. So I walk in there, and first of all, I, I have passed the place because it doesn't even look open. So I stop at this roadside like thing where the guy's selling vegetables and stuff. And I tell him my problem. He's like, I'll sell you a pair of waders. I'm like, I don't like those kind of waders, but thank you because they're like neoprene ones. And he's like, well, here, here's a, here's a patch and here's some spray paint. And if you use the like clear coat over patch, it should be good. I'm like, yeah, that, that, that's a good thing. Now I have two patches fixes. Then I said, he said, I where's the grocery store. He's like, it's there. It's like, there's nobody there. He's like, it should be open. So I drove back and the place is open. I was like, there's no cars, no nothing in this little tiny town. I walk in there and there's a kid putting liquor on the shelves and I was just like, what the hell? We were just talking about how we'd like to have a bottle of wine. So I like, what kind of, what kind of wine does Maria like? Red wine. So I get the best <laughs> brand, know, the breast, I get the, the best brand I could find. Jelly Jock. So, so, but then I said, that's not fair. She's going to be drinking. So I got me a, a butter shot, which I've never had. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it, I mean, it's. The cheapest liquor, but yeah, I mean, like a it good. couple of shots of it, and yeah. we whoop de do. And then, so I then, but I forgot to tell you, I bought a, a, a watermelon from this guy because after the guy gave me the, the stuff to patch my thing, I felt guilty for not buying something from. Him. So I bought a tomato, a cucumber, and a, and a and a little watermelon there. And then I was trying to open the door because I had my arms were all full, and the guy's walking out and he says, "Here, you need a hand?" And I go, "No." And I go to open the door, and I boom, there goes the watermelon. <laughs> Bang, splits in half. We both start laughing. Meanwhile, like, the, the, the whole point of the story, though, is when he left, I said, hurry back. Don't be a chatty Kathy. And uh, we got to fix this tarp. We got to make dinner, you know, so hurry up and get yourself back. Two hours and 55 no, minutes. No, it wasn't that long. <laughs> it wasn't that long. See, I, I said, I'm going to a little store down there. It's five miles. We'll see if I can find a patch. No big deal. I'll be right back. But then, like... <laughs> This this adventure turned into a multi, you know, oh, and it took yeah. nuts. There were steps. Come back with wine. Yeah, I come back liquor, with wine, liquor, watermelon. patch, watermelon, tomato, and cucumber. Spray paint. We were on spray paint. <laughs> spray. But we were. I had quite a mission. So, but we're gonna go ahead and fix my waders right now. I need to fix your head. Oh, just shut it off. Uh, <laughs> my head. I'm in the bathroom to take go to the bathroom in the outhouse, and there's this flipping snake in here with me. He's all climbing up in there, tripping. You know you're up north when the out in the woods when you go into the outhouse and freaking there's a snake in the in the bathroom with you. I'm just saying. <laughs>